if you're using tracks on stage, you should be using Ableton Live and you should be running them in Arrange View. And I, I've talked about that for many, many tutorials many, many times. But what happens if you have a large amount of songs? What happens if you want to reorder your songs? Should you use tracks in Session View or should you look at a completely different solution? I'm going to answer that question in today's tutorial. So if you've been around the channel for a while, you've likely seen lots of tutorials where I show you how to format your songs using the three-part framework for using tracks, how to load those in an Ableton Live session in uh, a range of view that looks pretty similar to this. But uh, recently, I've got a couple comments that I thought were really interesting. Um, one, someone uh, watched the tutorial, they commented the video production, thank you so much on that, and they said it's only fine for up to 20 songs for a church gig or whatever, not like seven to 800 songs in a corporate wedding environment. Which one, sir or madam, I would love to see the band that can uh, very effectively uh, play seven to 800 songs at a moment's notice in a corporate wedding environment uh, and do this well. But are they right? Is a range of view is Ableton Live only right for 15 to 20 songs for a church gig or whatever? Or can you use it in other scenarios with like hundreds of songs? Is that possible? Another comment where someone watched me talk about using a range of view for tracks versus session view and they said, yeah, but, which is the start of every YouTube comment, by the way. Yeah, but when you have a concert and you need to change the set list like a half an hour before, what do you do? So you go about rearranging the order of the set list. How do you want to do this in arrangement view? Question mark, question mark. In session view, simply drag the songs to the place in the right order and done, all caps. So again, I'm not sure if they don't know how to do this in arrangement view or they just prefer how this is done in session view. But in this tutorial, I want to talk about how to manage a large amount of songs uh, in Ableton Live, how to reorder songs and how to do this in a couple different ways. First thing up front, uh, you've got to understand the concept of creating a master set list. So I've got a set list of songs here. Uh, I think this is like 10 to 12 songs. I've got it loaded in Ableton Live. That's what we're going to work with for this tutorial. Uh, but this set could be up to 100 songs. It could be 150 songs. There's no hard limit to Ableton Live. The, the limit that you're working with is your computer. And what is that limit? Well, it depends on the processor speed of your computer, how many tracks you have per song. Uh, it depends on the sample rate, buffer size of those tracks, what your computer can manage. But I would encourage you, if you are in a scenario where um, you need access to any song at any moment, if you're playing a repertoire of songs and you need to go from this song to that song, as opposed to just kind of a consistent set of 10 to 15 songs, you know, you're going to be out on the road, you're going to play the same 15 songs every single night, uh, then I would encourage you to build a master set of songs, right? Master set that just means every song that's in your repertoire drop it into your Ableton set. Again, you go, but Will, um, we have 150 songs. Can my Ableton set manage that? Well, the only way to know is to try. Start building, uh, get to 20 songs, pause, play it, see does it work. Uh, and if it doesn't work, you've got two options. One, buy a new computer, which will be faster, uh, which is going to allow you to use more. Or two, break your, your uh, Ableton set maybe into individual set lists. So, I work with a lot of tribute bands, a lot of cover bands, not just church gigs or whatever, like my friend mentioned in the comments. Uh, and they're using, you know, 50 songs per set. They're, you know, have the possibility to do up to 50 at any moment, but they split it into different sections. And so they do this decade, this era uh, for this particular time, this uh, decade of songs at this time. In that case, it's completely safe to say, okay, 50 songs in this set list that we may pull from the top set list, middle set list is our other 50 and the back set list is our other 50, right? Don't choose a master set list because you think it takes too long to build a set. In that case, you just gotta uh, use my process, three-part framework for using tracks, but choose a master set list if you need access to any song at any moment, you've got a large repertoire of songs. So it's certainly possible to do. So I've got all my songs loaded into my Ableton set. Really the key to making this happen is to add a locator for every single one of your songs. So if you go to, for instance here, keep the candle burning, you see a locator that's there, haven't seen it yet, there's a locator for that. All my songs are in arrangement view. Uh, I've got a locator added uh, to them, so it's really easy to get access to. So again, let's go back to my friend's comment uh, where they said, if you have a change in a set list, you know, all you do in session view is drag and reorder your songs. Um, let's talk about how to reorder and change songs in Ableton Live's arrangement view. The first way I wanna show you is just to actually rearrange them. And for some reason, people think this isn't a possibility, but it's certainly a possibility. So let's say, let's take this haven't seen it yet song and let's move it to uh, 
um, uh, after Reckless Love here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all of Haven't Seen It Yet. So I'm gonna scroll in here to my set list. Uh, we're gonna scroll to the end of this and we're gonna select this entire amount of time. So this entire song goes from there to there, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is use the edit time commands. If you're unfamiliar with edit time commands, then you're clearly someone that's probably writing tracks in session view or your world is, is just, your mind's about to get, get blown. Your world's gonna change because you discovered this in a range of view. So if you go up to the edit menu, you'll see there's obviously cut, copy, duplicate, delete. But if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a few other features here. Cut time, paste time, duplicate time, delete time. So what I can do is I can cut this instead of Command X or Control X on a PC, I'm gonna do Command Shift X and that's going to cut that time. So it deletes that section of my song. Now, let's move this. We said we wanna place this after Reckless Love. So what I'm gonna do is scroll to after Reckless Love. Uh, let's find a downbeat here where we want this to be. Let's put it right here. I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna do Command Shift V and we're gonna place this, uh, this new song in the new location. So you can see, I just copied that song and I pasted it in a new location just like that. So I'm gonna to have to add a new locator to this. And so again, maybe that's what my friend was saying and saying like that's not an acceptable solution, uh, but it's certainly possible to do that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, so you can move your songs around, you can rearrange your songs by using the edit time commands. But I actually think there's a better way to do this. In fact, a couple different better ways to do this. And so let's dive into those in this particular video. So the first way that I think is better to do this is to remap your locators. Now, again, I mentioned what locators are. Uh, they I have a locator added for each one of uh, our songs in our set here. So you, if I scroll in, you can see you haven't seen it yet. There's a locator. One thing I didn't mention is I have used Ableton's key map feature. So let's go up to key to assign a key for every single song in my set list. And these are assigned to the order of songs in my set list. So uh, you can see my first song has has a number one here, number two, uh, song two is, is two, three is three, and four is four. So how do I navigate my set list? Well, this is really, really simple. I just press one on my keyboard to go to song one. Let's jump to song three, I press three. Let's jump to song two, I press two, jump to song four, and I press four. I could just navigate around my set list by using keys on my keyboard that's really, really simple. Or let's say I wanna swap the order of song three and four. Instead of moving it in my Ableton set, it's really simple to go into key map mode, click up here or do command K or control K, go to song three, delete that key mapping, click on the locator, press four. It's gonna say, hey, you've actually already mapped this. It's cool, because I'm gonna go to that song here and remap that to three, get out of key assign mode. And now when I press, uh, let's do song two, we jump straight to song two. When I press song three, it's gonna jump to what was previously song four. And when I press four, it's gonna jump to what was previously song three. So you could see that took no reordering of my set list. That could happen five minutes before the show. It could happen 10 minutes before the show and is incredibly simple and easy to do. And it's worth mentioning while we're on this, it's also possible to do this with a MIDI controller. So if I've MIDI mapped each of my locators like I have in this particular song, I could just go to my MIDI controller and say, okay, what I have mapped here for song three, I'm going to remap to song four and song four is gonna be remapped to song three. So that's a really easy way again to reorder your songs uh, without having to really do hardly any work whatsoever. And again, that could happen five minutes before show, it could happen mid show if you need to, uh, I don't suggest doing that, but you could key map mid-show if, if need be to reorder your songs. It's again, certainly possible to do. If you didn't know how to do it, now you do, which is great. But I still think there's better ways to do this. And what I wanna show you is two really fantastic solutions to make this happen. One of which you've probably heard and one of which I can almost guarantee you've never seen, you've never used, and is completely free to make happen. But before I do that, I wanna encourage you, if you're just getting started on this path of using tracks, particularly using tracks in Ableton Live, or maybe you've ran tracks in Session View, you've done uh, live looping things, but you wanna start using backing tracks with your band. Again, you need to do this the right way. You need to do this using a proven way. And I wanna save you hours and hours of effort and work to try to figure out what that is. If you head to fromstudiotostage.com slash template, you can download my free tracks template, which is available uh, for every version of Ableton Live, every edition of Ableton Live, PC and Mac. And you're gonna learn exactly how to use that template with my free six day email course. Where again, I'm gonna show you how to use that template to format your songs then take those formatted songs to bring into your set. So whether you're using this for a church gig or whatever, like my friend mentioned, this is the best way to run tracks on stage. And no matter how many songs are in your set list, this process works and it's gonna keep your set uh, the most stable way possible, give you the most flexibility, efficiency uh, around. All I have to do, again, head to fromstudiostage.com slash template to download that 
that template to get started for free. Now let's talk about the way to manage this that um, that costs absolutely nothing. I can almost guarantee you've never seen before. So I've got my set list loaded here and I don't know if you notice this or not, but up at the top, I have what I call a stop track added to each of these. And so essentially what that just means is I can play a song here, I can get to the end of the song and it's going to stop. Uh, and that MIDI note is the same thing as what's been mapped to my MIDI control. I'll link to a tutorial showing you how I set that up. But I think what my friend was trying to say when they commented and said in session view, all you do is simply drag the songs to the right place in the right order, is I think they're simply saying, when you have a large amount of songs, it's better to not view it this way, it's better to view it this way, in a list, basically. It's a lot easier for me to manage 10 items this way and see those than 10 items this way. For me, when I think about when I go to the grocery store, I don't write my grocery store list uh, horizontally, I write it vertically, right? We, we tend to manage list and to-dos and lots of items vertically. So I understand what they're talking about, but is it possible to do this in a range of view or do I have to jump over to session view to do this? Well, it's certainly possible to do this in a range of view. And again, I wanna share a way you've likely probably never seen before. So if I go over to Live's browser, click the show hide button over to the top left here, I go to my large set project and I expand what's called my song control track. So let's click that, uh, that open and you'll see uh, I have a MIDI clip that it corresponds with every single song in my set list. So what I'm starting to get at, I don't know if you, you're getting this or not, is I have my Ableton set and a range of view set up, but now what I have over to the list, it, uh, over to the left, is basically a list view of all my songs. So the way that I can do this, and I can do this while this is playing, again, I don't suggest that, but it's certainly possible. I could do this five minutes beforehand, I could do this 30 minutes beforehand, like my friend that uses session view to do this, and rearrange my songs very easily. Let me show you how easy this works. So let's go to our first song, and we can, sit and talk to uh, our music director, the artist we're working with and go, okay, so we have PTL, what do you wanna go to next? They say, I wanna go to Rise Up, okay? So I can drop my MIDI cue in and I'm gonna drop that in right here in this song control track and watch what happens. When we get to the end of the song here, there's our click, we drop out and we stop and we select Rise Up. Now let's go to the end of Rise Up here and uh, let's see, we're by default gonna go to Keep the Candle Burning. But um, this is gonna be a shorter set list. We're only doing three songs. So we wanna jump over to look what you've done. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna drag that song. We're gonna drop it right here. We're gonna to get to the end of this and you see we jump all the way to look what you've done, which is way down in our set list. Well, that's just for the sake of this. Let's do one more song. Let's actually jump back to the beginning of our set. Maybe this is like the, the we wanna redo everything. We get to the end of this song, we stop and you see that we jump to the beginning of our set. Now the way I'm doing this is using what's called a virtual MIDI driver. In my case, I'm using the IAC driver and I have pre-assigned MIDI clips to match each one of those MIDI mappings to my locator. So if I go into MIDI map mode here, PTL, you can see that the MIDI note assigned to this is uh, note B minus uh, two, MIDI channel 16. And if I go to my song control track here, you see it's set to channel 16. You can see song control, what's the note I have here? B minus two. So each one of these MIDI clips corresponds to those locators in my set uh, that's pre-mapped. And all I have to do to reorder my song instead of rebuilding my set is just move a MIDI clip to the end here. And I've got this set up to use what I call a uh, stop and go to next track uh, or stop and select next track. Uh, and the way this is set up is we hit stop and it's gonna stop. We have a track delay set for our song control track. So when we hit this MIDI clip, we're going to jump to that. What I love about this is this works on PC or Mac. Uh, if you're on Mac, use the IEC driver. If you're on PC, use Loop BE1. I'll link to a tutorial showing you exactly uh, how to set up Loop BE1 and the IEC driver on Mac. So they're completely free. You don't have to purchase anything. And it works in any version of Ableton Live, light, intro, standard, and suite, which I think makes this a really, really great solution, a really simple uh, solution to make this happen. So you can reorder your clips again. You can have it just stop at the end of your song. And you may look at that and go, well, that's a lot of work because you've got all these songs in your set. Does that mean I build a set list of, of you know 20 songs and I have to create MIDI clips for each one of these and remap? Well, if you've got, I think above 20, you're going to have, have to do that. But if you have 20 or less, you can check out my advanced arrangement view template uh, where I have this preset for, I believe up to 20 songs pre-mapped. All you have to do is just rename the MIDI clips, drag your songs in and it's, it's done for you. Plus, I have a, a full course, Tracks 201, 301, where I uh, walk you through how to do that. I'll include the link uh, in the description of this video to do that. But I'm going to talk about our final solution uh, because this is great, but that still takes a little bit of work, but it's free. Anyone can do it. Any version of Ableton Live can do it. But let's talk about how the pros do this out on the road. If you've got a large amount of songs, you need to constantly be redoing set lists, but you still want the flexibility, the simplicity of arrangement view, the ability to be spontaneous. What do you do? 
Well, the best solution is to use a set list management plugin. So in my particular set, if I scroll all the way down here, you didn't know it was here, but I have set list by Strange Electronic loaded into uh, my Ableton set. There's some really fantastic set list management solutions like set list, uh, the Leo box uh, by Guru Controllers, Taz SP by Oaktone, Able Set by my buddy Leo, all fantastic set list management solutions. And in fact, I've got a video where I shoot, do a shootout of all of those to tell you exactly what you should use. If you wanna see that, click the link in the description of this video. But the way that all of these kind of generally work is you have an Ableton Live set, a master set build of all your songs, and then this is a layer on top of your Ableton set. So in the case of set list, I click open interface and you see the full list of songs in my Ableton set. Instead of reordering songs, I can go, okay, let's do Reckless Love, let's add that to our set list. Let's do Keep the Candle Burning, we'll add that to our set list. Let's do In Jesus Name, because this is a church gig or whatever. Uh, add that to the set list and let's do Reckless Love, add to our set list. Then what I can do is I can navigate up and down throughout my set list, which is navigating my Ableton set. I can press play to start that song. You can see exactly what song is, is uh, playing and it automatically selects the next song. What this gives me is the best of both worlds. I get the linear view of Arrangement View, the ability to jump to any section with Arrangement View, but I get the ability to really quickly rebuild my set list and create multiple different set lists. And that's the beauty of all of these solutions is you can basically see your songs in your Ableton set, you can create new set lists, create multiple set lists, and, and do that almost instantly. And I know a lot of scenarios where the set lists literally change lives live in the moment. And every single one of these set list solutions has some sort of consideration for the ability to, uh, let's say, take this song and, and uh, uh, add this to our set list again at the end uh, to add a new song that we didn't even uh, plan on doing to our set list. And we could do that mid show if we need to. So again, if you're looking for the way the pros do this and manage multiple songs at once, again, they build a master set list of songs, which despite what my friend thinks is certainly possible to do in Ableton. Ableton Live. And number two, they rebuild and reorder set list very, very easily. Now, again, in order to use one of these set list management uh, solutions, you are going to have to buy a plugin. And you're probably wondering, well, what's the best plugin for me? Well, I've done a shootout of every single one of these plugins to give you the best possible solution and give you a couple different questions you can ask yourself to decide what's best for you. And I would highly encourage you to go watch that tutorial now so you know exactly what one of these set list solutions works best for you. Thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.